Hey YouTube, Jason here with Day Train Fearless. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, make sure you leave them down below um, in the uh, comment section. Also, if you do find value, please like this uh, video. Um, so I'll keep on doing these type of uh, videos. I just want to make sure you guys are enjoying it and these are uh, helpful. So make sure you do uh, smash that uh, like button. So let's, uh, as always, jump right into it. So um, let's uh, start looking at the S&P EMA futures. These are trend lines I've drawn over the last couple of weeks. Um, as you can see, I'm now going to start to add market profile um, for people uh, so you can see where the major, major support resistance levels are um, on all these things we talk about. So last week, um, we'll kind of zoom in, right? I said kind of watch this upper trend line that we had from here to here right and then from here to here all the way up we came right to it okay right to the upper side of the trend line kind of pulled back it was also the all-time highs um in this es future contract now spx is still higher um if we pull up that chart right remember spx is the can the continuation which is up at 33.93 so we haven't made all-time highs yet on the S&P 500, which is the SPX mainly. But for the future contracts, because remember, they roll every three months, we actually have made all-time highs and we kind of stopped right there. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of remove all these lines and let's uh, kind of start a whole new draw of all these lines and what i'm going to be looking for right now is let's go from here yeah, even to here and then from here to here and as you could see we have a rising wedge which is a bearish pattern okay also after reaching the all-time or these um, all-time highs on this uh, the september futures contract maybe we do see a pullback here um, we do have a little bit of divergence right that's kind of going on here and then here right we have divergence um, but I won't be surprised to see if we pull back maybe the news this weekend with a uh, Congress not being able to get a stimulus package going does that kind of roll the market back over and if it did I probably would be looking for about the slower trend line, which actually coincides with a low, um, a low volume node um, down here. So everything might be working out. Um, also, we have this swing high, so maybe even somewhere in between this level, I would probably say from 3,300 down to 3,280 might be a decent uh, long uh look for a quick maybe long position for a bounce okay if we do start to break down from this i would definitely be watching the 3200 levels um and then also this low volume node around 3160 but we will see like i say every week this is a market driven uh or sorry a news driven market right now any if anything, it's risk on um, until it's not. So let's uh, quickly look at SPY. Kind of came right up to this. I drew this last week right here and we're stalling. Again, let's redraw these lines. We'll clear them. We still have this uh, 3340, 33, uh, 339. Sorry, uh, to 340 level on SPY. So there's still more upside. But again, do we maybe do a small pullback? And let's grab a trend line, right? Do we do a small pullback from this rising wedge? And again, we see the low volume node here and then the bigger. So um, these are things to kind of keep an eye on going into this week for the overall market. Now, let's uh, look at um qqq real quick qqq um nice nice move 
okay all time um, I drew these fib levels just from this price action right here bull flag right bull flag broke out the 127 this is why I love my fib extensions if you want go back from the last couple week uh, in my videos I drew these right went right to the 127 and pulled back now if we break these highs I'd be watching the 1618 which is around 281 on QQQ and then the 200 ultimate target is around 288 um, so again nice breakout from the bull flag but again maybe this is kind of the bigger pattern going on if we kind of remove these lines right here okay and take this line duplicate drag this down again the reason I talk through this is to help people uh, learn how to also do a technical analysis so um, more upside and we can also pull back again high volume node right around this 261 level okay 260 261 level if we pull back maybe look there for a bounce uh, trade on QQQ next um, gold GLD has been on fire um, and I actually drew these if you go back a few months ago probably back to what was I believe maybe back in April I said hey I like gold for the longer term it looks like it's gonna break out nice inverse end shoulders and I drew a fib extension from this low to this high and it's all documented this isn't after the fact um, go look at my gold uh, video from a few months ago and look at this move that we had uh, right to the 127 pause kept going 1618 pause a little bit and our ultimate target of 200 and now we're pulling back okay this is why I love fib extensions to try and figure out where price potentially could go um now I've owned gold around this uh, 159 level and I actually sold um, all my gold uh, right when we got up to this 193 level um, so what I'd be looking for is a pullback um, I'd love to see a pullback back down to the 170s retest this fill all these gaps and then go that'd be a healthy market for me but gold is a momentum trade right now silver same thing with uh, silver I've owned silver since uh, 12 um, and I sold it 26 that was my ultimate target because if we do our fib extensions I'll do this one real time this low to this high I'm gonna go the highest peak right because look at this kind of double top right and then all the way back down and this is my 200 sold it around the 26 level that was my target silver gold could keep going what I actually did was I rolled all my gold and silver all my profits from it and I actually went and bought Bitcoin because if you think about it Bitcoin's going up a lot more than gold is um, on a percentage basis so I just kind of took all however much I had invested in gold and silver and threw in Bitcoin and I'm just gonna kind of leave it because I'm now using the house's money that's the way I look for it or look at it and now it's a longer term trade um, and things like that so um, gold silver and then finally let's take a look at Apple as we always do um, watch Apple okay um, nice I had this ma uh, major trend line all the way up here just from connecting these two lows right here to here right and this trend line we went right to it and we reversed okay again trend lines are really really helpful look at this trend line if we extend that to the right okay now we're stuck if we fail from here okay watch out uh, below let's uh, now let's clear all our drawings and let's do a brand new draw and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do from this high right here um, actually I want to know something let's go from this high to here and then from this low 
to here and on the bigger picture we might have a rollover okay I'm not saying it, but maybe, hey, listen, Apple's a $2 trillion company up at these levels. Right? If you think about it, it took 30 years to do its first trillion, and it's taken like a year and a half, or in this case, six months to gain a trillion dollars in market cap. That's kind of scary. Is it really worth it? I personally don't think so. I think it's overvalued. Um, they are doing a four to one split. So the stock will be, um, take this number, 444, divide that by four. It's going to come out to about 100, what is it, uh, 12, 112 bucks a share or something. Um, so more people could buy it. But again, it's just fibbing with numbers. But I would love to see a pullback right back to this breakout level, maybe even this gap level, and refill this uh, high volume node and maybe start to fill all this stuff in over here. Um, also, that would be right around the 23% uh, fib from high to low of the last couple of years, right? This entire move. Um, also, if we want, kind of get rid of these and let's just draw a basic Fibonacci retracement from this low to this high, maybe this is the rollover, right? Again, we won't know for another couple of days, but if it comes down, I like somewhere around this 360 to 380, even the 400 levels for a support bounce um, to potentially get long, but maybe fill this gap or just kind of come down here, this 400. I'd look to be a buyer to kind of maybe clean up this um, and make the volume or uh, the uh, TPO market profile start to look a lot cleaner up here, something like this, okay? So um, that's it for the uh, weekly watch list of August uh, 10th, 2000, or 2020. Um, again, make sure you guys hit the like if you guys find this uh, valuable. I love doing this for you guys, and um, hope, hopefully uh, you guys find value. And until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.